Hi, JT from Debasement Studios here. Uh, today we're going to have a look at microphone preamps. Preamps, they're often called. Uh, we're going to look at the various components you might get on a, on a, a whole bunch of these different units. And try and demystify it, sort of make you understand how they all work. Because they're all very similar and they all do almost exactly the same thing. And that main thing we do is we get from mic level up to line level. Almost everything we run in a recording studio, even a live sound console, is going to be running at line level. So we need these microphone preamps to get us from mic level up to line level. So, the four or five main things that we're going to come across on a preamp are going to include the gain, the input level, where you can, t how much you turn up that level to get it to line level, right? Then we're going to have 48 volts, which is a phantom power switch. So that switch is going to power things like some condenser microphones, some DIs that require that power. Um, you only want to avoid it on uh, ribbon microphones. Then you're going to get things like a high pass filter. A high pass filter might, will take out all the low frequencies of a signal and prevent the rumble. It'll take out a lot of the, the woof and the rumble that you get on signals you don't want that frequencies in. So they will often range from about 70 to 100 hertz and take out everything below that if you activate that switch. The other two main things that you come across on these particular preamps is equalizers and compressors. So we get those on some preamps and you get don't get them on others. And then you have some metering which you might come across on some preamps too. So meters are just going to tell you either the input level or the output level or they also might show you the gain reduction, how much compression that you're, you're putting on that particular signal. So let's have a look at each individual preamp here and uh, get to know each one and the variety of switches that we have. Cool. Sepatron VMP1000. So we have an, a, a gain knob, which is going to give you, you know, quite fine control of your gain. You have the gross gain knob here, which 0 dB for quiet signals, and then a pad 15 dB, and then a pad 25 dB there as well. Then we have two EQ switches. So here we have a flat option for both of the switches like that, or you can add in a bit of bright or a bit of air. So this is the top end part. And then for the low end, you can either add in some deep frequencies, so some low frequencies, or you can cut the low frequencies. Very simple switches, but very effective. Then we have phase in or phase reversed. And then you have phantom power on or phantom power off. That's it. That's the unit. You have a DI input at the front. Then we have ourselves a meter over here. So this has got a switch to you know view between medium, low or high for your um, VU there and then an on switch on the right hand side, that's it. Very simple, very effective unit. So TL Audio Ivory, Ivory Series, um, we're gonna go from left to right on this one, which is a very good way to go through a lot of preamps. So there's an instr instrument input at the front if you wanna just plug your guitar or bass straight in. Then we have the input. This doesn't have a gross input level like a, a pad switch or anything like that. It's just a broad range going from low to high input gain. Then we have a switch which is going to determine between mic line or instrument and if you turn it to the far left that is how you activate the 48 volts. So a uh, high pass filter here which is obviously set at 90 hertz and so having that out will do no frequency cut that pressing it in will take out everything below 90 hertz. Then we get to a compressor so with the compressor on we have pretty standard compression settings here so you've got a threshold and you have a ratio and you have makeup gain in case you, you know, when you take out quite a lot of signal and then four switch settings for um, the slow and the fast for the compressor's attack and the release. So EQ, uh, expander gate and output section here. So the expander gate, uh, I don't use it very much to be honest, um, but it's there if you need it. It will obviously take out any signals below a certain level. Now, the equaliser has four bands where you have uh, boost and cut and frequency selectors at the top. The meter here, the meter is going to control what's, what's showing up here on the VU and you've got GR for gain reduction, output plus 10 dB, output and input. We also have the output volume switch here, so if you've boosted a lot with the EQ and you need to reduce it here, you can do that, um, vice versa. You can boost the signal, cut the signal. We have an EQ on switch, which activates the EQ. You have the EQ pre, which will put the equalizer before the compressor. And then we have a link switch, which helps you join two of these units together if you want to run them in stereo. The power switch here, obviously, and like all these preamps, all the connectors are at the back. So this is a Focusrite ISA110 preamp. And what we have here is in the top section, 
bottom, depending on how you look at it, it is on an angle. It comes from an old mixing console. It has a high pass filter and a low pass filter. So here you can decide um, what frequencies you're going to let pass above 60 hertz, or if you t turn it to there, it'll go to off. And a similar thing at the opposite end of the frequency ranges where you get a low pass filter. So anything, if I change that down to 12 there, that means 12 kilohertz, and that means that it will cut out anything above 12 kilohertz, or you could say it'll let anything pass below 12 kilohertz. Now, the, the phase invert button here is going to invert or reverse the phase for this particular channel, and then you're also going to, right next to this, have the main EQ switch. So pressing that button in is going to turn on the entire EQ for the entire preamp. Now, this bottom section here is quite simply two shelf EQs. So you have uh, a low shelf and a high shelf and a, and a frequency selected to determine exactly where that shelf is going to start. Then you have an EQ in button here which is going to turn in just that section of the preamp. So light in means those shelves are active, light out means that they're obviously not active. Second section of the EQ here, again we have an in and an out button but this section is a little bit more, a little bit different. So we actually, because it's a parametric EQ, we have a Q here, also known as the bandwidth. And this is going to uh, change between you know, a, a wide bandwidth and a thin bandwidth for each of these sections. Then we have the, the boost or the cut for, this, for each section there. And then we have this funny little knob here, which has two rings around it with frequencies written there. So if this button is pressed in with the times three on it, that'll times that center frequency by three and equal um, the, the larger number there. So at the moment, that is on 40 hertz that it's controlling. And when I press that in, that is on 120 hertz. So you can get quite a range of frequencies uh, to choose from here um, for that particular section just by using that times three button. So it's similar again, times three, the frequency here for this top section, so you control high frequency. So that would be currently taking out 1.5K and that would currently be boosting 4.5K there. Now, the top section here, we have a few controls. Important buttons here is this mic and line switch. So this is looking at the mic input from the back of the unit and this is looking at the line input. Now the mic input has a gross switch and a fine switch. So this switch here will basically um, change between 6 dB increments um, on the input level. So you've got quite a large range going on there. And then this is a fine tuner here which is only going to work at around about another 6 dB total to fine tune that input gain. Now when you go to line level, that's where this one becomes active and it only has these quite gross 6 dB increments that are happening here. Uh, so there's no fine tuner for the line input level on this one. Cool. So universal uh, 610 preamp here. Uh, it's called a 2610 because it's basically got two channels. So the both, both sides are exactly the same. So we have uh, a, the big knob in the middle, as you'd imagine, is going to be the gain. It's the fine increment gain so you can really you know, nail exactly what input level you're getting here. And then from the top left, this is our gross gain level input. So we have plus five, zero, minus five, and minus 10, and plus 10, etc. Um, you also have a 15 dB pad here, which you can activate if things are just way too hot coming in. Uh, we have a phase in and out button here. So that is the little phase symbol there. You got a high Z, Z input, which is basically meaning like your other preamps, it is a guitar, level input at the front there. Then we have down here, this is basically a switch whether we're going from mic or line or the high Z, your guitar input there. And these different settings here are basically ohmage settings relating to what particular microphone or what particular level of instrument input you have coming in there. So over on the right hand side is basically two EQ switches. So we have a switch between what frequency we can use here, 4.5, 10k or 7k and then we have a boost or a cut and then you have a similar sort of option but for the low frequencies down here for 70 hertz if you want to take out a lot of 70 hertz or you might find yourself wanting to boost in a lot of 200 just like that so switches in the middle here we have a 48 volt switch so that you can turn on your fan of power and then the master on switch for the entire unit and that's it nice and simple but very beautiful